Howdy folks, Max Mogren here, oilfreefun.com. It is November 27th, 2013, here in beautiful Grand Teton National Park. This is a book review of Deep, the story of skiing and the future of snow, recently published by Rink House Productions and written by Porter Fox, an editor at Powder Magazine. Uh, I personally am an avid backcountry skier and environmental activist living here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. and. It was impossible to ignore this book. Uh, it was released two weeks ago and the coordinated marketing campaign has been really comprehensive. So I had to read it. And I was hopeful going into reading this book that it would do a good job addressing all of the factors contributing to climate change and all of the strategies proposed to mitigate it. Uh, specifically, one issue I'm really passionate about that's in the headlines a lot lately is geoengineering. And the book, Deep, I was really disappointed with Deep's coverage of the geoengineering issue because it was incomplete and misleading. Uh, many technologies have been proposed for, for decades uh, to mitigate climate change or to use the weather and the climate as a tool or as a weapon. And all of these technologies are lumped under the categorization geoengineering. But in the book, uh, Porter Fox uses a rather common but artificially limiting definition of geoengineering that claims these technologies are only used to mitigate climate change, right? Well, there are as many reasons to geoengineer as there are reasons to conventionally engineer. You know, you might be engineering a car, you might be engineering a ski, you might be engineering a camera, whatever it is. And uh, the same thing is true with geoengineering technologies. You might be manipulating the weather as a weapon. You might be manipulating the climate to, because you like playing God. You might be manipulating the climate because you can bet on it on the stock market. So right from the get-go, Fox's coverage of geoengineering overlooks the fact that these technologies could be used for other purposes than merely to mitigate climate change. Uh, another failure in Fox's coverage of geoengineering is that he paints it like it's some pie-in-the-sky uh, science fiction. He says that since the 1960s, uh, the science of geoengineering has vacillated somewhere between science fiction and experimentation. Now, this is a drastic departure from reality as conveyed, for example, by Harvard geoengineer David Keith in an interview on Australian national TV on November 22nd, 2012, over a year ago. And in that interview, Keith acknowledged what many of us who've studied the geoengineering issue in depth already knew. One, that these technologies have been developed since the 1960s. And two, that they provide, as Keith put it, deep problems of governance, meaning they could be misused. Um, the most, you know, uh, what is widely perceived to be the most probable and uh, cost-effective geoengineering technology is solar radiation management, stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, which is a more advanced form of cloud seeding. And Porter Fox doesn't even touch on that at all. Uh, the only examples of geoengineering in the book are these pie-in-the-sky <laughs> notions like shooting a, a rocket at the moon and creating artificial plants for carbon capture. Um, anybody who knows how plants work knows that the greatest, <laughs> the greatest carbon capture technology are natural plants. If humans are really serious about carbon capture, let's just plant some trees. But the fact that the book totally overlooks stratospheric aerosol geoengineering is absurd. And a few pages later, Fox contradicts himself entirely by saying that ski areas have been in the geoengineering game for quite some time. Uh, he, you know, previously had called geoengineering this thing that has vacillated between science fiction and experimentation. And now he's saying that ski areas have been actively geoengineering for decades in reference to localized cloud seeding and snowmaking operations. So, you know, what is it? You're, the reader is left with a really muddled and confused picture of geoengineering 
after reading Porter Fox's book. Um, the book, the coverage of climate change, is very speculative and throughout the book Fox repeatedly talks about the distant future like he knows what's going to happen. Uh, he uses the words might, could, and will interchangeably throughout the book. I'll put a few examples in here, uh, direct quotes from the book that, uh, you know, it's, it's pure speculation to claim to know the distant future, to claim to know what the weather and the climate will be doing uh, you know, 87 years in advance. He often talks about the year 2100 and how ski resorts might have to close uh, by that time. Uh, Porter Fox, the solutions he recommends for climate change uh, to mitigate climate change is basically, it boils down to carbon taxes. Uh, meaning Porter Fox believes we need to increase energy prices, increase big government, increase taxation in general, um, it, build global government structures to enforce and implement environmental regulations. And so he's calling for a, basically a more controlled world. Uh, the other perspective is kind of the free market approach where, you know, suppress energy technologies, new energy technologies, breakthrough energy technologies. If these were allowed to compete on the, the free market, we would render fossil fuels obsolete. But uh, that's a little digression. The point is Porter Fox is calling for, you know, his approach to the book, he's calling for big government, big taxation, higher energy prices. And it's a little absurd and hypocritical because the whole book is based on his travels to ski. And it's written from the perspective of attempting to uh, prolong the ski area culture, the ski resort culture, ski town economies. And ironically, ski areas, ski resorts, heli skiing operations, uh, people, you know, the absurd real estate prices in ski towns where very, very obscenely wealthy people have vacation homes that are empty 90% of the year and then they, you know, they fly here on private jets, drive around in their SUVs, eat food that's imported with fossil fuels, etc., etc. The whole ski industry is a, pretty much the epitome of unsustainability. Uh, within the you know the heli skiing and the resort skiing, backcountry skiing like this is the exact opposite. So long story short, in the book Deep, the story of skiing in the future of snow, Porter Fox calls for carbon taxes to mitigate climate change. Uh, these carbon taxes mean higher fuel costs, bigger government, global governmental organizations charged with implementing and enforcing worldwide environmental and other policies and overall a world where people who can afford to pollute are still allowed to pollute. People like Porter Fox and Jeremy Jones, founder of Protect Our Winners, are, will still be able to jet set around the world and take helicopters to the summits of remote peaks. Um, because they'll, they can afford to pay the carbon taxes. Whereas people who are barely squeaking by on the edge of you know, in extreme poverty in third world countries won't be able to afford food, uh, won't be able to afford fuel. And it's interesting, the book takes such an elitist stance that Porter Fox actually says that in order to support the current world population, uh, we would need 140% of the existing land area. You know, I look around me right now here in Jackson Hole and I see nothing but empty land. Land that could be technologically, you know, used. We could build greenhouses and grow food. You know, there are so many ways to support people in a sustainable way that uh, the notion that the world is overpopulated and we would need 140% of the existing land mass uh, to support the, the current population is just insane right off the bat. And I think the fact that Porter Fox states that in the book 
uh, unequivocally and with no support showcases the fact that he is a globalist, he is a statist, he is uh, not concerned with the well-being of all people, and he doesn't believe in personal responsibility for decreasing emissions, you know. The world could support more people. It could support the existing population sustainably if the wealthy few didn't live such wasteful and resource intensive and inequality bolstering lifestyles. So long story short, deep, the story of snow and the future of skiing is speculative propaganda. The computer models that Fox cites in his outlandish predictions about the world 87 years from now were created by government funded institutions, government scientists, government think tanks, or uh, big banks. You know, throughout the book, he, he consistently cites this report from the World Bank. And who benefits from carbon taxes? Who benefits from bigger government? Well, the banks benefit and the government benefits because it prolongs the existing financial and political system. My personal opinion is that the existing government has proven itself to be a failure on almost every environmental issue. Uh, whether it was you know, nuclear accidents like that in Fukushima, what did the government do? They turned off their radiation monitoring equipment. You know, What's the uh, government's approach to fracking? Uh, well, they don't even need to disclose what they're putting in the chemicals in the ground. What's the government's approach to geoengineering? Well, as far back as 1996, there's a US Air Force document called 2025 weather as a force multiplier owning the weather by 2025 so i think porter fox is you know he might mean well he might be sincere in his quest to inform people about climate change but i get the impression that he's just spewing propaganda i don't really recommend the book but i would recommend people that are passionate about the geoengineering issue, about weather warfare, about climate change as a whole, uh, read this book, leave an honest review like this one. That's it. Take care. One love. Peace.